Okay, I'm uh, James A. Olson, and I'm just here to tell you about this bolo tie that I made. And first I'll tell you about the pottery, which is called Sikiyaki Pottery. It's basically a pre-Hopi pottery uh, made in, in Hopi land uh, at a... Uh, a rune below Second Mesa, which I'm not sure the exact date, but they had some tribal uh, differences down there. And the people from the other mesas, I guess, thought the people in Sikiaki were not living right. And they went down and burned it, destroyed it, killed some people. And so Sikiaki is a rune, but they figure this is where the pottery started being made at that rune. And it's probably the finest prehistoric pottery that was ever produced. It was made from 1400 to 1600. So you, you can't, I can't per se say. So some of it's historic because the uh, Spanish got up there about, I think about 1590. And uh, so basically most of it's prehistoric and extensively traded throughout central uh, New Mexico and Arizona because every, everybody wanted it. It was su such nice pottery. And one reason is, of course, they had pottery down real well and they must have great materials to work with. And also, there's coal seams down in Hopi land, so this pottery is coal fired rather than wood fired. So, of course, I just had a shard about this big and just was able to get the body and the tips and the head off of it, and very luckily. But when you clink that pottery shards together, it sounds like china or porcelain. I mean, the quality is just so great. And We'll look at the feathers, which are mammoth ivory and Utah jet, which are very, very time consuming to make. You notch, notch your mammoth ivory, then you put a 45 on your jet, and of course they're running wild. Then you put your template for your size grind them out, mount them on a dop stick, and then do your final uh, sanding and finish shaping and finishing. And a lot of time involved to get those correct. And then the silver balls are like, basically you take uh, fine silver, 0.999 to make a good silver ball, set it down, put a little flux on it, and just get it melting, and then just keep twirling your torch around until that that melts, like it might be crunched up wire, melts, comes together, and just starts spinning, and uh, creates very nice uh, silver balls. Uh, but you can only go so big that way, and that's about as big as you can get, and then they'll start going oblong. And these balls in here, of course, are for looks, but they're also structural. They keep these feathers, which are just bezel with a real fine, fine bezel, and so those are structural. And uh, let's see. Other than that, uh, let's just say, say there was a lot of time involved, uh, and some uh, stressful moments, and. Uh, but I was, I'm very, very pleased with the piece. And uh, as far as the pottery goes, I don't have any more, whether I can acquire some. Of course, it's, I acquire legal pottery that's papered from where it came off of private property runes. Uh, but, Right now, I have none, and I have no idea when I'll get some. 
So basically, in fact, I'd really not even rather not even sell the piece, but it is. It is. I gotta keep buying gas, and I gotta keep buying food, and that's what I do. So I hope you enjoy looking at it, or if you buy it, you have a. As far as I'm concerned, a one of a kind. And if I say I like a piece that I make, which is quite often, I mean, with, or say when I really like it and I don't want to sell it, it's, to me it's a nice piece. So, thanks a lot.